Hi and welcome to the very first MRTV board meeting. Together with me here is MRTV team member Marco Budde and my name is Sebastian Ang. What is this show all about? Well, these are our normal meetings. This is our MRTV headquarter and yeah, whenever something new happens, whenever we get a new device, of course, we have this talk where we, where we talk with each other and where we want to find out what are our thoughts about a new headset. And now we simply thought, you know what, why don't we record this board meeting and let you join it? And this is what the show all is all about. Right, Marco? Hi, exactly. This is uh, the right summary, I think, about this new new episode and this new show. show. This new yes, format. Exactly. Yeah, cool. So what are our topics today in this meeting? Yeah, th that is a good question. And that's where I can directly also show people what we did here. We put some cameras here into the room. And for example, I can show you just me, <laughs> me with Marco here. <laughs> there, yeah. yeah, Marco, yes, and Marco with me. And also... <laughs> Exciting. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we have this here, an an another camera. And here you directly see the main topic here. And yeah, we can even move it. Look at this. Beautiful. Exactly. This is... <laughs> yeah, hello. Yeah, this is... And I can also put us here again. Yes, this is the brand new Pico Neo 3 Link. And this is... We have just heard it. Mm -hmm. This is the headset that Pico is going to send to the Western markets, first here in Europe. We haven't heard about America, the US yet, but I also believe they might go there, but we're not sure yet. But this is going to come out in Europe. And this is exciting because this actually is the Quest 2 competitor. Right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Because as you can see, it looks as the Quest 2. It looks pretty much exactly as the Quest 2. It could come from the same... Yeah, fabrication uh, hall. Or I, I think the exact it does. Name. I think it does. From the same, yeah, yes. right, right. It it looks so similar, and also the specs are really, really close to what the Quest Two has to offer. And we're going to talk about this device. Yeah. So let's directly um, talk about the facts of this device. So this is going to be sold here in in Germany and other European countries. What was it? Um, first of all, um, Spain as well, right? Uh, do you remember where they're going to come out with it? No, I don't remember. Yeah. But uh, France, I yes, think. Exactly. France, Germany, um, I think UK and Spain, I believe. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's not so important. It's going to come out here in Europe. And and for Germany, maybe you don't know this. But for Germany, this is the premiere because the Quest 2 isn't available here in Germany. Exactly. It was not available at any time. Only the right. Quest 1 was available in Germany. But exactly. as, uh, as I think at the end of the Quest 1 life cycle, um, the, the stop of the sales um, has started. I think we are. Yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah. When the in Quest 20, 2 came out, the Quest 2 didn't come out here in Germany. Exactly, but even before, even before okay. the Rift S and Quest oh, yeah. 1. They pulled everything exactly, out. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so what is exciting about this Quest 2 competitor is, of course, first of all, for us Germans, it will launch here in Germany. But more interestingly, the price. Marco, 449 euros. This is... What do you think about it? I, I love this price. Okay. And this price is the most important thing here. Because if this headset would cost 1,000 euros or $1,000, does not matter. Yeah, we wouldn't be excited. No, <laughs> we would not. Because <laughs> the Quest would always be the reference to yeah. compare with. Always. Right. And it is always. Every headset on the market, like from HTC or HP or, or even Valve with the old index, um, has to be... Um, or, or is beaten by the Quest 2's price. And uh, this is the most important thing here, that this only costs 449 euros. Right. Also really important to mention, this device has 256 gigabyte of storage. So it compares to the Quest one by one. It's exactly the same thing. Exactly. Right. However, if you think about it, it's even cheaper because... And this is also another differentiating factor as compared to the Quest 2. 
Let's show that here. Yep. Oh yeah. Several things. <laughs> yeah, <okay. laughs> Woo! Several things are getting into the picture here. First of all, this directly comes with an elite strap. Yep. Can show it closer. So the battery is here in the back. Yeah. So, so unlike the Quest 2, you don't have to um, buy another elite strap, which is cool. Yeah. And it also comes with this here, with the link cable. And the exciting part about this cable, this is not a USB cable. The exciting part of this, of this here, of the link, of this cable here that comes with the Neo Link, Neo 3 Link, is that this is actually an actual display port cable. So unlike the Quest and Quest 2, where the data is compressed, sent over USB and decompressed for us to see it, here we have the raw video signal that directly goes into the headset, just like we see it, for example, with the, the, the Reverb G2 or the Index or all the other PC VR headset, headsets, which most likely, we, we haven't tried it yet, but we will try it, will give us a superior picture as compared to the Quest 2 when connected to the PC for Steam VR games. This is the most important thing for any PC VR enthusiast. Yeah. The Quest 2 was never a thing for enthusiasts because of the compression. The compression um, compared to or, or the, the, the picture quality, um, which was caused by the, the bad picture quality in comparison, which was caused by the compression, was always the bad thing compared uh, to like the G2 uh, right. or other headsets, which are native PC VR headsets. Right. And this is a, a major difference here to the Quest 2. And a major difference from Pico because they positioned they have positioned this headset of, to to the PC VR market now. The Quest is also compatible to PC VR, but it's not designed for PC VR. It's it's right. a standalone device, and this is the main function of the device. And PC VR can be played with it, but right. but here we have both worlds. We have like the Pimax announcement, uh, a, a completely all-in-one device, native PC VR and native uh, standalone, when we uh, right. could call it like this. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, what excites me about this is actually that this will not only compete against the Quest 2, but actually it also competes against the Reverb G2, especially if the picture quality looks as good as we hope right now. We haven't yeah. checked it with DisplayPort, but exactly. if then, well, this costs 449 euros, it's cheaper than the G2, and you can play wirelessly, exactly. right? Something that the G2 yeah. cannot do. So this competes now against the Quest 2, but also against the G2, and hopefully it could, can do everything good. Exactly, the G2 is the only sharp device on PC VR right now, um, um, at the same time as the Quest 2 um, yeah. was released. The problem right. is the Valve Index isn't sharp. Is it? It is not. It is you, sharp, but the resolution is not high enough. That's what you mean, right? Yeah, it is clear. It's not yeah. sharp. You cannot say that it is sharp. The resolution, yeah. You, yes, yeah. this is the problem. And um, there was always the G2. You, 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 you got the G2. <laughs> you got the G2 because... Um, uh, and you you've seen <laughs> okay this yeah, is we, we do have fun exactly in the emma tv board meetings just to let you know we do have fun yeah. so we're not going to cut this out edit this out because <laughs> you're just joining our board meeting right now this is the normal <laughs> normal stuff here yeah. sebastian is always laughing <laughs> about about my english <laughs> and um, no um just kidding so you you got the the G two I think in April or in May twenty twenty yeah wow it's the year twenty twenty long time ago, long time ago right. for two years now it was amazing exactly it blew my mind away because there was no headset uh, at this time um, which uh, even came yeah, close compared. yeah exactly it was just mind blowing at that exactly. time exactly uh, but HP had a problem <laughs> back then uh, HP it didn't work. <laughs> The headset worked not on all main board. Is this is what you no. referring to. <laughs> I I was talking about the release date. Ah, uh, yeah, it came out 
too way late. too late. Way exactly. too late because exactly. suddenly to wait and Oculus sucks. came. Yeah, right. You're right. And um, uh, I think October 2020 when right. was when they re when they released the Quest 2, and um, from this many people have uh, bought the Quest 2 even uh, with the pre-order of the G2. Right. And then they came yes. from the from the Quest 2 experience to the G2, and the gap was not not so huge anymore. Exactly. Agreed. Still, it's still visible, right? But it, um, it, it was totally it's visible. absolutely visible. Agreed. Yeah, we both like the G2, but yeah, exactly. So it was not so mind blowing anymore as it was for me in the first place. But anyways, now this device here, it it could really compete against both, mm -hmm. right? For the people who wonder, should I get the G2 or this? Well. This can do wireless. The G2 cannot. Exactly. Of course, we have to see how good the wireless will be. I can remember I tried it like uh, more than half a year ago. It was good, mm -hmm. not perfect, not as good as virtual desktop, right? Yeah. But it was good. <laughs> <laughs> What's <Yeah>. funny? <laughs> no, not nothing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. As I'm you can tell, we have a we have a good time working together. So <laughs> it's great to have this job here. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Right, so it can compete against the G2, but it also can compare, compete against the Quest. So this is a very interesting kind of device here right now. Let's have a look at the specs to, to just show people like how similar it is yeah. compared to the Quest 2. Basically, this is a Quest 2 copy. Let's just say it out loud. So what's the resolution? The resolution is 1832 by 1920 pixels per eye. Yeah. It is the same like the Quest 2. So it, it, the same also, it has the same uh, one display, only one display, not two displays. And it's the same panel. It's it? the same panel. Let's, yeah. let's be honest. <laughs> it's okay. the same panel. Um, in terms of the lenses, we also have like three positions for the IPD. So exactly the same. Um, yeah, I'm going to show it yeah. in a moment. Let me just bring this over here. Can you hold this? <laughs> Okay, we have to make this a better for the next time. <laughs> yeah, but still, I love that we can show it here like this. This is amazing. Here now, this is this is how the lenses look like. So the shape of the lenses is a bit different as compared to the Quest Two, but also you have here these kind of like different positions. So also, you move the lenses. It is very very similar as compared to the quest 2 yeah i'd like to know from you in the comments um if you have problems with the ipd with the three ipd steps for me it's okay i think for you too for me it's perfect exactly but i know some people for them it's not perfect yeah right and um, yes this is always a problem if someone wants a device but cannot use it because yes. of those little things agreed yeah. agreed so yeah same panel same um, ipd adjustment what else does it have let's have a look um yeah refresh rate um, can do 72 hertz but also 90 hertz we haven't heard from 100, 120 hertz but I must say, I really don't think it's a huge problem. For me personally, I'm totally fine with 90 hertz. Me I cannot too. even see 120 hertz. Yeah. And especially for a mobile device, it even makes sense to cap it at 90 hertz because for 120 hertz, yeah, you're going to um, use so much more battery life. Exactly. Right? So I'm happy with 90 hertz that it has 90 hertz. It has 90 hertz. So in my book that's fine they are more important thing that the 120 hertz yeah. option yeah, they have to implement i don't know if if it's already there but i don't think that it's there um, <laughs> i i would love to see motion smoothing yeah we don't know this is very important yeah. for, we don't for know. simmers yeah. for example and um th those functions are very um, important when it comes to detail right at, and at first glance um, many many headsets look good and are good but when you use it you you feel oh there's no motion smoothing like with the air arrow and um, yes <laughs> this is yeah. always a problem then it is even even when it's so cheap but um, yeah we have yeah. to see we don't know right we, we don't know we speculate yeah. right now 
Yeah, what else do we have here? Okay, the, there's a glasses spacer, just like with the Quest 2. We have um, integrated audio, just like with the Quest 2. And we have <laughs> like, like a <laughs> microphone. Yeah. And they, we have the same amount of RAM, six gigabytes. Um, yeah, storage, um, 256 here with the Pico Neo 3 Link. And there's only one model, 256, and it costs 449 euros. Yeah, for the battery, that, that's an interesting difference. So as you can tell here, the battery is in the, in the back, and this has a capacity of 5,300 5, milliampere hours. And the Quest has 3,640 milliampere hours hours so <laughs> so um <laughs> so marco what are your thoughts about the um how long you can use it i think um it according will last, to uh, mathematics <laughs> yes i think it will last like two hours at least so i think more yes at least at least yeah <laughs> at least <laughs> it's yeah. the bottom line but the quest is uh two hours um at the maximum Right. Yeah. Good point. That's the difference. Good point. So two to two to three hours, I would say. Yeah. Yes. I also believe so. So we have, yeah, significantly more, I would say. And the good thing is, the battery is in the back of the device. It's just like if you would go for the elite strap with battery, it directly helps to balance the device out. And I can tell tell you already, I already was wearing it, and it's it's very balanced. It feels yeah. really balanced. Yeah. So. <laughs> That, that is good. But yeah. another battery topic are the controllers. Yes. And um, yes, we have two AA batteries here instead of one with the Quest 2. So this is the difference. But I personally think that the that the controller will last even longer than the That's what Quest I think two. too. Yes, because the I don't think technology. that they uh, will suck energy like the G2's controllers. No. And um, yes, very nice detail. And they maybe we can focus on the controllers. Right. First of all, yeah, we totally mentioned this, the same inside out tracking with for, for cameras, just like the Quest 2. We didn't mention it because we thought like, okay, Quest 2, copy. Yeah. <laughs> it is um, the same technology for the tracking, infrared light. So yeah, that should work well. And I know already, I've tried it before. I know that the tracking is good, just as good. This is so important that this is not a, a, a totally new device. Exactly. We we know a lot of it about it, and you have tested it like one year ago. No, yeah, no, no, half a year half ago. Half a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the controllers. Show them probably into the. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Oh, with the MRTV logo in the back. So <laughs> this is what the controllers looks like. What they look like. What is what is here printed? Press the area marked with an arrow and slide the cover down. Okay, thank you for this notice. And they are longer than the Quest twos, so we could compare it from the ring. Yeah, for example, so a bit higher. Yep. Yeah. Now it's, it's very visible. Yes. It's, it's, it's very. It's much longer for people exactly. with with big hands. That actually could be more comfortable. But this is the right angle. I think we we have to compare because they are longer at the top and at the bottom. Yeah. Because um, we have this this little bridge here. Okay. I don't know why, but it's okay. Yes, and um, they feel okay. They feel quite similar. But uh, what would you say about the, the material here? Yeah, so in direct comparison, I f it feels a bit flimsy. It doesn't feel as high quality as the Quest 2 controllers, honestly speaking. Mm. But that's only for the controller. For the headset itself, it looks exactly the same. Yes. The quality, right? That's, the that's same right. material. But in direct AB comparison, you can tell that somehow the Quest 2 controllers looks better in terms of the build quality, in terms of the material. This looks a bit flimsy in my opinion. And um, yeah, it, it just looks a bit cheaper. 
uh, that's just a feeling that I have. But you have a, you have a similar feeling, right? If you if you compare it, that's true. I think it's a little bit like Xbox uh, Series X controller and PlayStation Five DualSense controller. Okay. So they are both great, but in terms of feeling, I would say I would go with the DualSense. And um, this is without mentioning that the DualSense have these um, nice adaptive triggers. Yeah. This is only only the feeling. They are both very, very good. I think um, everyone would love them. You mean this controller? Yeah. This controller? Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. So when 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 I should compare to the G2 controller, yeah. I think um, it's better. And this is not mentioning the tracking, of course, just right. the controller itself. Right. How's the rumble? I don't remember. That's something we have to try okay. once we try it. Good. Yep. And now... I think we have to t take a break, right? I have to cut this out. The light. Really? Has changed. Yeah, like. Let's have a look. It's okay. Is it still okay? It's fine. Okay, then we I will totally don't. Now. Then we totally don't do any cuts here for <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. So, um, the controllers. Great. Yeah, what else? What else is different? I think. I think we talked about most of it. Um, yeah, let me just ask you, Marco, what are your thoughts? Do you think Pico will be able to compete against Meta with this? What do you think um, consumers will say to this? Yes, they will say yes. It's it's more, um, it's even, no, what's the term? <laughs> what do you want to say? Um, it's not as expensive as a Quest 2. It's cheaper. It's cheaper. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. It's cheaper because you you get more for your money. You get the the lead strap, as you, we have already said. You get the native display port cable, and um, in my opinion, this is a Quest 2 copy, but with more functions. And um, for this reason, the Quest 2 and the Pico Neo 3 are not in the same directions on the market. Right. Maybe Great. they are uh, on par with the price, but the Pico Neo 3 is more on the PCVR side mm -hmm. than, it, than the Quest 2 is on the PCVR. Totally. The, the link functionality of the Quest 2 and the Air Link and Virtual Desktop, it's always with compression. And this is a problem because if you, have an, if you are a PCVR enthusiast, you don't want this compression. You will always buy a native PCVR headset right. and a Quest 2, maybe. And we have never seen the native resolution of the Quest 2. Exactly. Right? It's but always lower. Can. But now we can see how good the panel could be yeah. using the DisplayPort cable. I hope it's not shit. Yeah, I, I really also <laughs> hope so. Yeah, we have <laughs> to see. We are, we're just uh, talking about this yeah. and maybe now it's... We're assuming it's good. We don't know. But exactly. We, we are, yeah, I've heard some people use it before. They, they loved it. Yeah. But we have to see it with our own eyes, of course. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I really think that Pico has a great shot here at, at um, being successful with the Neo 3 Link. And, and I do it, believe yeah. that we now have a competitor here. As a buyer, for me, this is what Pimax have announced has okay, announced right right because um but this is real in this, here <laughs> this is real this is a very <laughs> this is a very important detail yeah um especially when we talk about Pimax but um what i mean is that Pimax have um have announced a headset has announced a headset that um is for everything and everything, um, every function is at the, at its best. So we have the all-in-one functionality, we have the standalone, we have the wireless, we have the native PCR. Yeah, and the yes, QLED, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yes. And um, they, they have said um, in every category, it's the best on the market, the best as it could be. And now we have a much cheaper device here with the, with the Neo 3, which also offers a native PCVR function. Right. And if it's good, if the quality is fine, then Pimax has a big problem. So yes, to yeah. be honest, Pimax 
Pimax have um, has uh, um, thought that uh, okay, we are Pimax, we will announce a headset yeah. which does everything and native PCR, paste right. PCVR. The Quest does not do that, but now <laughs> the near yeah, now this will, does it. Yes. But from, I still from nowhere. But I still think they are not really like targeting the same target audiences. This is actually mass market. This is really for the normal user, yeah, who probably first wants to get into VR. The Pimax is still more enthusiast. But also the the, still the, more, the price yeah. point, the, especially with the price point now more than two thousand euro for the for the device. But yeah, they're there should be cheaper ones, but still, even the cheaper ones, they will not be in that 449 euro category, right? That's true. So I think they don't really directly compete. But I, I agree with you that this is now very similar to what Pimax wanted to do. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And what I would like to say and would like to mention is that Pimax has to compare now with this mm -hmm. headset, right. and not the Quest 2, because this is more like a Pimax announcement headset um, as the Quest 2 is. Right, exactly, because Only of the native PC VR. Yeah, yes, right, exactly. the display link, right. Very interesting. Actually, now it comes to my mind that we haven't at all talked about the store here of this. Mm -hmm. So another announcement, we got more than 100 games with this. And yeah, I have looked into the store before, and there are titles that we know, like Quest 2 games, yeah. which are now there. Arizona Sunshine and other other uh, yeah big names that we know so so that is nice and in China basically this is the Quest 2 mm -hmm. because in China there is no Quest 2 so we do have a nice store which has more than 100 titles and probably now because this is available in the West as well probably more and more developers they might think hey why not port the game to this device probably it's super easy <laughs> Yeah. Actually, I know it's very easy. Um, and um, yeah, also earn money on this store. So what are your thoughts about this? Uh, do you believe they could compete against the, the Quest store? If the device um, will sell well, then um, the, the developers will port the Quest 2 games for sure and very yeah. easily. The same with the Pimax. But the most important thing about the quest 2 store are the exclusives mm -hmm. i can play do, I, right. I can play that's a good point. major triple a titles and um, i think this is something like um, we can see on xbox versus playstation we have we have this this exclusive titles on playstation but on xbox it's more the common games where which we can play also on PlayStation and also on PC. Mm -hmm. So I think the the meta the meta strategy is um, a good strategy when we see it through the the company's eyes. But right. as as a as a consumer, I always hate. I know. I, I never like the <laughs> exclusives. Yeah, right. This is a big problem, and for me. It's an even even bigger problem that we have now another store. Mm -hmm. We have the Pimax store uh, soon. We have the Quest store. We have um, the the uh, Pico store. Um, we have an HTC store. Infinity store. Yes, and yeah. and and this store on the Focus Three, it's, it's a completely side different. Quest. We have side quest. Okay, it's it's not. Yeah, you're right. This is okay. Side quest is open. You're right. And this is the most important thing for me. SideQuest is open. So for me, I would like to see a SideQuest store where big titles will be released. When I have a big library of Oculus titles now, and, and not, always, not only Oculus titles, but titles in my Oculus store, I would think uh, twice to buy uh, a brand, uh, a headset of another brand. No. Of course, yeah, I will. That, I will lose all of my games. That is always the case, right? With this walled gardens, like if you are using like the, the Apple, yeah, or, or, if, or also for Apple, right? If you're in yeah. the in the iPhone exactly. environment, then you will think twice to get an Android yeah. because you have already bought, I don't know, Things Three or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, so that that is that is of course like a good thought. Like this is good. I mean, we will do the full review, obviously, right here on MRTV. But um, in general, I, I have tested it already. It's a good headset. 
Yeah. Um, it has a store which has hundreds of titles, a hundred titles, more than hundred titles, and more titles will come. But it doesn't have the exclusives that Oculus, that Meta comes out with, the uh, GTA San Andreas, um, Resident Evil. So, so the people will think about it, the the, the consumers. However, we don't know. Probably there will be exclusives for the Pico as well, mm -hmm. because ByteDance, the owner of Pico, is a huge player, a huge player in China yeah. and actually in the whole world. We learned in the pre-briefing of content for content, and they have lots of money. So who knows? Probably they will come out with an exclusive as well, right? We don't know. It's, this is just an we assumption right now, but they could. But I would hate that. I know. I would hate it. <laughs> I know that you would hate it. Yeah, but th that's how they will. They must differentiate themselves. Exactly. We need a we need a, a third party store. Yeah. Where where the business model is just the to store. sell just a store. Exactly. Exactly. Valve. Valve. Steam. We Valve. We need Steam, Steam VR exactly to have that store where all the um, yeah standalone headsets can get their their stuff. Exactly. Or SideQuest, but SideQuest would have to go now. They must. They would need to support headsets like this, right? Or get get headsets to to use that store. Yeah, anyways, that's another whole different topic. But yeah, definitely this is a pro for the Quest 2, The exclusives that Meta works on. You see, it works. The exclusive the exclusive thing works. It works, of course. It's, there's no of question. It right? does. <laughs> and yeah, no. I, I love the 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 quality of the exclusives like Resident Evil 4, right. it's amazing. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, GTA San Andreas. Me too, me yeah. too. However, I also see some yeah, advantages here for Pico because it doesn't have that f forced Facebook login mm -hmm. that unfortunately Meta still has. We are in, we are in April now. Yeah. And last year they said, okay, in 2022, we're going to do away with that. Because it was a problem. They watched MRTV and thought like, hey, why does this guy always talk about forced Facebook login? Mm -hmm. right, that's why they changed it now. Or they, they said they would change it. But until now, we haven't seen it. Here, we have a device. There is no forced Facebook login. And we have asked the company. There's also no forced TikTok login. It is a Pico account. And yeah, if you want to buy games from the Pico store, then obviously you need to make one. But if not, then not. Then you can simply use the streaming and do your Steam VR games. This is an what do you think about thing, that? That you don't need yep. an account at right. all when you just uh, want to use it as a PC VR headset. That's pretty cool. It's very important. It's just like the mention. Reverb G2 or, like, or the Index. You just yeah. connect it and it will work. This is great. And um, to be honest, the Vario Aero needs an account even for that. Yeah, right. Uh, right. This is, for me... I, I, I have no problems in the in the normal world, but I hate the fact that I need to be online to use the set set. Okay. That I need to create an account. Why? Yeah. There's for me no no reason to to do it, and I hate it. For, uh, to be honest, if uh, some users will say to me, uh, "Don't, um, it's not a problem. Okay. Why are you so angry about that? So yeah. mad about that?" But for you. It's a friggin' problem. <laughs> it is a problem. Yeah. I can not understand if a user would would argue f for that company okay. when when the connection is not not there or if the servers were down mm -hmm. will will be down um, in 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 a few years, for example, for this headset. Yeah, no, we cannot use it. Why is this something I would I would argue uh, towards the company? Mm -hmm. This is, uh, for me, I, I cannot think about one reason why it's an uh, uh, advantage to yeah, have... It's not an advantage. To be forced to be... Uh, no. To, no. It's not an advantage. No. I agree with you. But some people say to me, oh, Marco, yeah. why do you say this always? These people will die. <laughs> no, to be honest, Eventually, at one point in time. <laughs> it's, it's uh, for me, uh, nothing we, we could... Uh, I mean... Of course, I use it. I've bought it. It's okay. Yeah, but it's always better to have a device where you don't need to do it. Where you don't. Need yeah, to I agree. Do it. And here, it's like this. Exactly. Which is good. Yeah. Very cool. 
that that's that that's really cool. So and of course it makes sense if you want to buy games that you need an account. There's no question about it, right? Sure. There's no question about it. Yeah, cool. Um, yes, store headstrap. We talked about most. We talked about most, right? Most yeah. of the spec. Okay. Yeah. Then one thing that I also need to mention and uh, yeah you know and uh, the audience knows that i was always very critical of meta because of that forced um, facebook log login and uh, privacy issues so i also want to be fair and also name the problems or the issues that i see with this headset here the thing is byte dance is a chinese company and for chinese companies unfortunately we have the problem of Content censorship in China, mm -hmm. right? Like, for example, you you've heard about the the Great Firewall of China and how how the the government is censoring the media, right? You you won't find anything about the Tiananmen massacre or or Taiwan independence, nothing, right? And now it's it's kind of interesting because now it's the first time that a Chinese company has a store in the Western world for us. And in the pre-briefing with Pico, I asked the question, okay, what will happen about political censorship? Is that, mm -hmm. is that a thing here with the Pico Neo 3? And what if somebody makes a wonderful VR documentary about the Tiananmen massacre? Will it be able to? And here we have a little cut. Sorry about this, but the hard disk was full, really bad. So yeah, anyways, now we have more space and we can go on. Much good content on the hard disk. It's too, too much good content, yeah. exactly. So my question would have been now, what if a developer does a VR documentary about the Tiananmen massacre? It's, and yeah, well, this is, of, to can be it honest, be, can yeah. it be on the Pico? Yeah store to, to be honest the question was um in the in the pre-briefing um yeah i asked the question you, you've asked the question and to be honest this is a very important topic because we we've blamed facebook for the that's the point the, for the privacy, privacy issues and um of course we have to we have to um, speak about the topic of censorship right and um the answer was they don't know, of course, what the policies uh, will be because um, in this pre-briefing there was no no person um, from ByteDance. From it was Byte just Dance, Pico. exactly. And this is this is the important thing he he uh, he mentioned. He said we are we are Pico. We are not ByteDance. And of course, we we are here in the Western world in Western Europe. Yeah, right. So um, this is not something he would expect, but at the end, uh, ByteDance is is on the top of the of the whole company, and um, yeah, yes. they will make the final decisions. Exactly, but I, uh, to be honest, I would think that um, this guidelines uh, to um, about censorship will will uh, be active and will be. Um, Yes, followed by in, in China. There for sure. There for sure. Like Apple has always um, those um, big words about privacy and and open-minded. Um, but they do follow the self-censorship exactly, in China as well. Because money right. money is the most important exactly. for them. And um, for, for this market in Europe, I don't think that we will have um, this problem, to be honest. But we will I, have to. We will have. I to would agree. Think. Uh, we, have no, to we have to. We, we have, have to, to watch about it. We have yeah. to watch. Yeah. I think it's a kind of an interesting situation because we didn't have this kind of situation before in the Western world, where like a Chinese company has this kind of content store. Because before, yeah, we're used to what Android, um, Apple, and uh, yeah, Sony or Xbox, right? And we don't have this problem. Yeah. Okay. We're in the city. Sorry. <laughs> there was some some crazy people. Some crazy, yeah. But where? they didn't hear it because. The microphone setup exactly, is so good. Yeah. <laughs> so the question will be, is is it a different, the, the European store of Pico, will it be different yeah. from the Pico store in China? That's the question. That's the question. And we, well, we will see. Let's see. We will if, see. Yes. But I, in general, I don't think that too many people will do the VR documentary about the Tiananmen Square or do the Taiwan is an in independent country VR game. I don't think it's going to be a practical problem. But it is still worth to mention it 
like uh, that you need to be online with the arrow yeah, for example yeah right this it's, is a, it's something we we should mention we mention it right and, and um, it's a good it's good to think about it and also it's fair because we do mention the privacy issue exactly. with facebook yeah. and we should mention there might be some kind of um yeah content policies that are not okay. what we are used to in the west this is um yes take it as you want yeah you have the information here exactly and um yes it's fair to it's fair it's to fair. call it out it's right to, to to let you guys know yeah. that we also in an mrtv board meeting we think about it yeah like how do we deal with it do i mention it now every time in every video yes we have discussed it We've, yesterday yeah exactly so this is something yeah. that we do discuss so it's good that it's also in this show for people yeah. to think about it themselves <laughs> great yeah i think we have talked about everything i believe that um the conclusion is that you and me are extremely <laughs> excited What's going on here outside? yeah it's we're in the city center yeah <laughs> we are extremely excited about the device yeah it, it it is the competitor that we've been waiting for for the quest 2 same price but actually cheaper because it brings more to the table mm -hmm. is there anything to add to this the important thing is here the quality of the native display cable it is so that's what we're going to check now so we're exactly. going to check it now and uh, of course you will you'll not will see get... it in this video yeah <laughs> sorry they will not see it in this video what we think about it no, but no. you will see it on mrtv exactly. what we think about it exactly in a later video in a later video right yeah cool i do think that this concludes actually the first um like public um board meeting <laughs> that we have here and yeah simply let us know what do you think about this show is it interesting for you to join this kind of uh, board meeting that we normally have is it okay is it cool that we do this with all the cameras and the mics here do you enjoy it if yes do leave the thumbs up and do especially let us know in the comment section what do you think about this new format is it something that you want to see in the future this kind of long form really being here with us when we find our position about a headset do let us know in the comment section and yeah i, I love it i must tell you directly i really love this this kind of uh, behind the scenes show obviously we always enjoy to make content together but um yeah again this is even better now with this cool setup here. What, what, what are your thoughts? Yes, it was a nice idea. And yes, we, we do our meetings here and we do our discussions. So why not record it? Exactly. It's, it's, uh, it's the most information um, um, we you can get, the, um, the, the most directly yeah. information. Raw and Raw. unedited. Exactly. Yeah. Just one point. Just one point. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, it's it's always funny here. So yeah, we always have a good time. It's great. Exactly. So this is uh, the reason why <laughs> you you can see when we laugh. Here. <laughs> yeah, right. We have a good time, and yeah, it's it's a good job. It's really it's we we, we both enjoy doing this. All right, that's it for the first MRTV board meeting. Uh, if you have not, uh, yeah, if you want to know what we think about this here, right? You you must absolutely subscribe to this channel and click on the bell button so that you don't miss anything and we're looking forward to see you in the next episode until then bye bye bye